Welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, Making History. And we're thinking about Juna. Now, last episode, I did trial a manned sort of craft on the moon, and we used that as a basis. But I think I'd actually like to design some kind of maybe comm satellite, maybe something that we're going to send out there to make things a little bit safer for our unmanned side of things. So why don't we give that a go? Why don't we start out with that? All right, so get started then. We want 3,000 to 4,000 Delta V or so on the craft that we send out to Juno, just to give us some kind of flexibility, ideally. So I'm going to start with the Hex. So that's the upgraded Octo. Has a bit more stuff on board. Uh, in general, it's got an improved stability assist. So instead of SAS, it's also got SAS prograde retrograde hold. Yeah, there we go. Does need a bit more power though, but that's, that should be okay. And then everything else we're going to base this around has to be based around the antenna we use. The antenna is going to have to be pretty big. And there's a couple that we can choose from. Um, that's 10 gigameters. This one's L2. Level 2 is 27 gigameters. Yeah, either one of those should do. They're both relays. I'm not quite sure if we need the level 3 data deep space network to make this one work, however. So let's put this on for now. And if if we can't send this out far enough, we'll have to make a lighter antenna. If we don't want a relay, we can all send this out, which is much, much lighter. But then if we send out another craft following it, then, you know, we could make another craft with a much lighter antenna that could use this one as a relay to get information back here. So that seems reasonable. Uh, let's just stick a couple of batteries on it. Uh, why not? And then we're going to have to consider some kind of solar power. Now, remember, we've got the upgraded, if you've been following along, we've got the upgraded panels. Uh, we've got the XLs, which will cost 6,000. But we've got quite a lot of money, so we can take a look at those anyway. Or we can go for the 1x6s. And uh, these are going to produce 1.6 per second. So I think these will be just fine. And as usual, I kind of like triple symmetry on this, just because of the, the shape of the hex. If we just expand that for a second, you'll see what I mean. So I do like, I do kind of like this kind of symmetry. Seems very appropriate for a deep space probe. Okay, and let's pack that back in. So we've got panels now, and we may have to move those up a little bit. There we go. So what else do we need? Well, we need some kind of drive, and then we need some kind of um, sort of fuel for that. So, why don't we have a look, first of all, at... Are we going to carry a payload? We're probably going to put science instruments on this thing, but not... Not as a feature, more as a kind of... Just strap them on <laughs> strap them on wherever we can in this thing. So, what have we got that's small enough for this? Um, I'm going to say we definitely have these. The Oscar Bs. And... If we put this many on, let's see what this gives us. If we put a spark on the back. This gives us 2,404. Not quite enough. Um, but we can put more of these in place. Let's just uh, remove you for a second. Put you back. And what if I just grab you. And again, just do triple symmetry the other way. Remember, this is all going to fit behind this huge antenna, so plenty of room there. And then we'll need some ducts. Assuming I have research ducts, it's been a while since I played this uh, pack, so let's take a quick look. There we go. Okay, so that's 4000 Delta V. Now, we could also think about shedding these tanks once they're full, and if we do that, so 3,868, fine. Let's just take these off for a second. And then we want our coupling systems and we want the smallest, there was a huge, <laughs> there was a huge on this craft, but I think those are the smallest ones, are they not? Uh, yeah, they are the smallest ones, okay, fine. They may add too much to the weight of this to make this re a reasonable option, but I th just thought I'd give this a go anyway. Whoops, let's just change that to one for a second. And then that will let me get the setup here. 
still just about within this so let's just take this off and now we can go into triple symmetry mode and now we can grab this and go back here see that's no good these <laughs> these are too too heavy by far so let's take that off and uh, yep afraid they're gonna have to go sorry we just can't afford the weight and let's instead do this okay lots of uh delta delta v there i guess we can also try and fit some science in here that would be nice i guess uh we just don't have the room for <laughs> for this we don't have the room for the survey scanner so uh we're going to go back to single symmetry now and uh, put these in the relevant places so we want a thermometer a uh seismic accelerometer is more for yeah acceleration during flight but that's more for surface stuff we'll get to surfaces later no need for storage units uh mystery goo yes i would kind of like that but let's just get a barometer in first and that's going to be a laser surface scanning device yes yeah, so we're not going to have that infrared telescope that's interesting do i want that that may be huge but let's just see how how big it is yep yeah, yep yeah, that's not going on there <laughs> okay and then i guess we'll see what we can do about mystery goo so we only need at least two probably one for junior high junior low and three of them still gets us three and a half thousand delta v and that seems like a reasonable module so let's just say uh let's call this uh mars hmm should we call this viking voyager viking let's call it viking for now okay uh is there anything else on here that i want uh probably later but uh, not just yet we just don't have the capability just yet uh, again this is just far too large unless we go on a manned ship of course and that has to be a much larger rocket so with that in mind let's see what we've got that can get this up into orbit and maybe an injection stage uh let's see what do i have anything saved let's have a look what i have saved the extra liner um hmm that gets us lots of things and that should do the job 7000 up to this stage let's just rebuild the top stage uh, delete the fairing please and let's rebuild the fairing up to about here oh uh, you're not gonna like that are you okay let's go a little bit wider then to there and then we'll just close it off at the top in case it has a bit of a waste that's mainly <laughs> because of this uh, protective shell i don't think we have any larger ones and this is behind this fuel tank adapter anyway so that much is for certain and then we've got the rest of this okay so we're going to need a few bits and pieces first of all we now should have the stability enhancers so let's add those to it as well and they can go well they can go triple but we don't need double i think because of where those boosters are yep okay and let's bring this down all right so we've got the launch stage uh we can move those down there then we're going to eject the two side boosters then we're going to go on to the presume that's the aj10 ish yeah they're equivalent to the aj10 and then we should be fine yes so, so let's say say like uh, viking one okay and we'll save that too okay so this is our craft we're going to send to juna uh we're going to test it i think we're still three weeks away from the juna uh intercept but that doesn't mean that we can't just send it anyway we've got the funds it's only thirty-six thousand, and we get 613,000. so that's more than fine by me let me just see if there's any missions first of all here you can see my alarm clock 22 days until that's up explore juna 
Uh, so fly by Juna is incomplete. Uh, expires in two days and it won't actually expire. It, it doesn't have a deadline. So we're going to take that mission anyway. And let's just see. Um, there's normally one that says something like go past Ike at the same time. But I don't see anything. Position satellite in a specific orbit of Ike. Antenna can generate power. Thermometer, no, that requires a resource survey scanner. We can't really do that. Uh, surface outpost on Ike, no. No, we can't do that either. Um, science station from surface, rescue, plank flag on Minmus. Let me just reject that. Will it give me another one? Um, let's just get rid of the tourist missions. No, it won't give me another one. Okay, so that's fine too. And I don't think we can afford any more research and development. Let me just check. There was nothing to research. So I've made well, the one other quick change to this just to deal with the Delta V situation. I did have an extra section in here in between this Wolfhound and between this fuel tank adapter, which is full. And I could fly with that still in place, but without the fuel tanks full. And the main issue is this uh, stage four. We've got 1.25 now. When I had that other section, that other fuel tank in there previously, that was under one. That, that would not that would not accelerate well off the pad. <laughs> well, in fact, it would say like accelerate well, well off the pad until the boosters uh, burned out, and then it would just slow to a halt. We don't exactly want that. So instead, we're going to fly it with one less fuel tank stage. All right, so off we go. And you'll see as we're taking off, this is the, the stage we're going to be looking for. 1.25 it starts off at 1.1 but hopefully by the time these first these two thrusters burn out we should get to a situation where that will be a, a whole lot more manageable so let's just see how well that goes starting to increase now uh, anywhere one around 1.2 will be fine for me i think we're currently at uh, 1.38 1.39 and our boosters are not long for this uh not long for this um this world <laughs> they're uh well, I want to make sure they don't crash into the pad, but other than that, we should be okay. There they go. Staging. Off they go, and the thrust should throw them sideways away from the pad, which is good. Well, hopefully they don't destroy the runway. And you'll see after a brief setback, it actually is now accelerating upwards. We've got quite a bit left in this stage because those two boosters were connected by fuel ducts so everything is quite nice so now i just need to head up into orbit and i'll see you once we're up there and here we are with our fairings detaching heading behind us obviously we're not in orbit yet but we're at 100 so we're approaching our apo and i've uh, got 30 seconds to go so we can now increase speed a touch and then i'll just want to bring ourselves so that that time slows down there we go, it's stuck at 34 now, which means we should be fine to get ourselves into orbit. We will be running out of fuel very shortly, but that is also fine. We have planned for that. We do have another stage, which should be our sort of sort of injection stage. Oh, well, not injection, but yeah, sort of heading out of uh, Kerbin's orbit across to Juna. And is that it out? It is it out. So let's get rid of you. And this should drop back down into the ocean because we're not in orbit yet and we can just move away with a much nicer aj10 which is a much well the wolf found <laughs> the rej10 i should say much much better for vacuum but of course we're approaching apo so we just need to be a little bit better on this than we are on the other engine in terms of thrust we need to increase that thrust a little bit so we're now at 20 seconds to apo and we're just fine. You can see our periapsis is coming up really, really quickly now. And re-entry in four minutes. We're not going to get to re-entry, don't worry. And we just slow all the way down. There we go. Okay, we're pretty much now in orbit, or we will be very, very shortly. With most of our fuel available. So what, what fuel do we have left? We're going to have around about 2,000... Delta V, there we go, we're just about to head up out of the atmosphere, 10,000, let's just actually increase speed, fly it near instantly, yep, that'll take us out of the atmosphere, and we're now in orbit, so if we're in orbit, let's just extend these, I forgot to actually add these to, a, to an, an action group, that's fine though, 
assuming of course those two batteries can hold on while we pass behind the planet but we can have a look whether that will happen whoops yeah there's only a 410 electric charge in any case now we've got to think about where we're going to plot this thing uh, remember we are three weeks off the planned window but that's not much of a problem we can send this out and then we can send our actual craft out behind it it gives us two chances to get things right um, although i'm not quite sure if we'll hit juna with this particular setup but let's zoom out so there is juna and what we're going to need to do is head out this way and such that our the other side of our orbit is going to be extended outwards over here and that's going to happen when we use this injection stage or whatever we call it and juna is obviously going to sweep around as well whether we'll get an intercept is something else entirely. So let's see if we can plan something and let's see if we're close enough to do that. So we're going to want it probably around about here at a maneuver. And then let's just bring it out just so that we can see this a little bit more. And we're going to need to break out of orbit. So that's going to take quite a bit of delta V. In fact, let's just zoom in so you can see where that's going. There we go. And now we're on an escape trajectory. And you'll see where the other side of our orbit is. So if we just head that out a little bit, we should get close. There we go. Now, are our inclinations slightly off from Juna? I can never remember. Mars certainly is, but I don't know whether Juna is particularly. And let's see if we can play around with this a little bit, just modifying the time and let's see if we can get any kind of intercept at all. Uh, what you can also do is try and do maneuvers when you're out here, but you're kind of doing things blind, just as we did on very early flights. So let me see if I can get something reasonable. Okay, so this is about as close as I can actually get this thing. Um, because we're just very early, you'll see our separation is 594,000 kilometers. We're three weeks early. That requires a fair amount of radial to, to convince this thing to fly. So you see, it's a little bit odd in that we're not sweeping out quite as far quite as soon. Uh, so And it's also manipulating the time we get there. So that is fine. Uh, we're going to have to add one orbit, though. Um, can we add one orbit? Yeah, that doesn't make any significant difference to, to the actual time there. So we're going to fly that, I think. And to do that, we, we are going to just turn this thing around, point at the maneuver node, get rid of mech jab, um, and get rid of the maneuver planner. Maneuver planner is very good to get you an initial transfer to another planet. Feel free to do so if you want to use that. Um, but that won't be a great one when you're not at the transfer window. So use that to start out and then customize with either the handles manually or, you know, the, the mod I'm using to do that. So let's just point at the maneuver node. And now we, it's at a 31 second burn. It's a thousand meters per second, but we have 2000 on board. So we have a good amount of spare. And that does mean we can adjust things around halfway around, but we won't get to do that this episode because it will take a long time. And our actual uh, transfer window is going to be coming up in three weeks. So we couldn't run this. <laughs> because it's going to take longer than three weeks, but we can certainly get it out there and running. And that would be going into, essentially into deep space. So uh, let's get around to the other side of this. So we want to just bring ourselves around here. here. You'll see our electric charge is going down, but we're going, if we're going around the planet fast enough that that's not a major issue. We're about to come back into sunlight. And there we go. These these solar panels that just reorient themselves make things so much easier <laughs> rather than any kind of fixed panel on the side of things. And that's fine. You do get this slightly sort of janky purple line. Um, I, I just ignore it. <laughs> uh, that's unfortunately a problem with the I'm presumably the game engine or it's just a, a very stretched serrated line or something like that. OK, so our maneuver node is nearby. It's going to up in two minutes and it's going to take 31 seconds. So we want to go forwards until we are around about 15 seconds and then we can burn. OK, let's just get on the maneuver node. There we go. OK, so let's move forward until we get to the maneuver node. 
and we're coming up to it right now. Unfortunately, the hex isn't good enough to just point at the maneuver node. We could use smart ASS, uh, which we don't have yet either. So we're just going to use the bear systems and there's 15 seconds. So we're just going to try and match this. It's not terribly important to get this perfect uh, as such, because we're going to be adjusting things as we go when we get halfway around anyway, or halfway around this intercept. But, you know, just just try and get it. Try and get it close if you can. Uh, this engine is pretty good at doing its job, so that will be fine. And I'm um, even though it's already moving away. <laughs> Let's just slow ourselves down. And in fact, that's just bring us all the way to zero. But uh, let's just line up to this maneuver node again and increase. We just want to chase the maneuver node a little bit to get this down to a few meters per second. Uh, six. Mm, we can get a bit closer than that, can't we? 0 0.2. I call that good. <laughs> All right. So we're definitely on an escape course now. Our first probe is going to make it. Let's see what uh, its closest approach is. 618. 18,000 is not too bad. You'll see that's actually still increasing, though. Interesting. This is off. Uh, but maybe we're not entirely out of it. Hmm. Interesting. That should settle down as we actually start leaving this behind. And we can accelerate a little bit, at least, anyway, just to see the planet falling away behind us. And... We should get some sun sometime soon. There we go. Okay, so this probe is on its way. Nothing much we can do with it now, or nothing we care to do with it now, other than watch maybe even a, uh, an eclipse happen. But other than that, we should be done. And are you changing now? Uh, or you should be locked, hopefully. Yes, good. Okay, so next episode, we're going to build another one of these, I think. And we have so much extra fuel, we may as well tack on some more stuff onto this, if possible. Uh, we've got an extra, extra 900 meters per second just on this stage, and then we've got three and a half thousand. So we've got more than enough to do lots of other stuff. So a follow up one, maybe we'll get the chance to put one of those science juniors on it. Maybe. Not quite convinced yet. We'll see where that goes. So with a probe on its way to Juno, Technically, we only have to fly by. Now we've got to decide, I guess, what we're going to do next. Uh, the mission technically only needs us to fly by, and that gives us a... Uh, do we have to do anything? Just fly by Juna? Does it have any... No? Anywhere nearby Juna to achieve that goal? Fine. We should be able to do that just fine. Uh, the problem will not be that much so much flying by Juna as not crashing. Um, now, we could, as this is the first craft, Retract these when we get close to Juna. Fly this thing backwards. <laughs> All right. And try not necessarily an aero braking to land, but an aero braking to bring ourselves into an orbit around Juna. That'd be an interesting one to fly. I think I need to do some research before I try this, but I think the aero braking to land is around 40 kilometers, 42, 43. And this thing doesn't really have any kind of heat shield. So I'd just rather use like, the upper atmosphere. Um, you know, once these are actually back in play, uh, sorry, back in, in the protective shielding, maybe to try doing some a little bit of air braking, but also use the engine to bring the other side of our orbit, which is going to be initially just a flyby, and see if we can bring it into an actual orbit. Or we could just use this to, uh, to completely break for orbit without going into the atmosphere. Hmm. Why don't I leave that up to you? Tell me what you want to what's happened with this one. Uh, you don't get to decide on the next one. That, <laughs> that's the one I decide on. But this first one, let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, we'll try that and see how well it goes. So yeah, I will leave it there for this episode. We've got our first interplanetary probe up and running. Whether it survives is going to be up to you. But beyond that, I think then we'll think about manned uh, maybe the next uh, intercept time with Juno. In the meantime, however, I'll try and send a few of these out, if not just two, maybe even three, at the transfer window, and then we'll have a bunch of different experiments. I need one at least to survive with either a relay or a direct. Ideally, I'd like a relay that stays out there, 
A direct one, don't much, much care if that survives, if it's got all the science and it's able to transmit via the relay back to the, uh, back to the space center. So we'll see how well that goes too. All right, I hope you enjoy this episode. Uh, why don't we just start it spinning? Is that not traditional? Well, maybe not, because all the <laughs> solar panels will have to realign all the time. Never mind. Um, in any case, we'll leave it there for this episode, I think. We've got some more stuff done in Kerbal Space Program, and then we'll see you next episode for maybe... Well, certainly... Yeah, certainly the orbit, maybe even on an intentional collision with Duna. If you liked the episode, feel free to like, subscribe, and share as normal. If you want to see more episodes, of course, you can subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at Greater Story if you really want to. You should get notifications that way if you don't care for the YouTube system. And to be fair, that is probably more reliable than the YouTube system, which decides just on its own whether you actually might want to see these things. Even if you decide to subscribe to a channel, it decides, yeah, you know, you're not interested in that channel, even though you've subscribed. Not that I'm bitter. <laughs> in any case, we'll see you next episode, guys, and thanks for watching.